Lawrence Colbert's Cognitive Theory of Moral Development. So, um, before we say anything more, I want to present the Heinz Dilemma. The Heinz Dilemma. A woman was on her deathbed. There was only one drug that the doctors thought might save her. The druggist that made that particular medicine sold it for 10 times the price of the production costs. The sick woman's husband, Heinz, was poor and could not afford to buy the drug, not even with the financial help of his friends. Heinz then asked the pharmacist to sell it to him for half the price, but he refused. To save the life of his wife, Heinz broke into the man's laboratory and stole the medicine. Now tell us, should Heinz have stolen the drug? Would it change anything if Heinz didn't love his wife? What if the person dying was not his wife, but a stranger? Should the police arrest the druggist for murder if the wife had died? Please write your answers and their justifications in the comments below. Lawrence Colbert's Cognitive Theory of Moral Development There are three levels of moral development in that is Number one, pre-conventional level. Number two, conventional level. Number three, post-conventional level. Pre-conventional level. Moral reasoning is based on the consequence result of the act itself is good or bad. This level focuses on what will be the result of the action that we will be doing whether it is good or bad. It has two stages. Number one is punishment or obedience. And number two is mutual benefit. Stage number one, punishment or obedience. One is motivated by fear of punishment. He will act in order to avoid punishment. For example, a mother told his child that stay at home or you will be punished. Accordingly, the child will obey his mother to avoid any punishment. Second stage, mutual benefit. One is motivated to act by the benefit that one may obtain later. Example, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. The second level of moral development by Colbert's theory, the conventional. It means that moral reasoning is based on the conventions or norms of society. This may include approval of others, law, and order. Now, there are third and fourth stages. On third stage, we have social approval. One is motivated by what others expect in behavior, good boy or good girl. The person acts because he or she values how he or she will appear to others. He or she gives importance on what people will think or say. So the video that will presented now is example for stage 3. Interpersonal accord and conformity guide our moral judgment. Betty sees the fight and wants to intervene. But when she realizes that all the others are just watching, she decides not to get involved. She wants others to see that she is a good girl who is conforming with the ethics of the community. She asks herself, what do others think of me? So the video means that the child or the individual is good in order to be seen as being good by other people. So now they're taking it into other people's thoughts into an account. So there's an emphasis on conformity. So being nice and having that consideration of how traces influences our relationships is important. On fourth stage, we have law and order. One is motivated to act in order to uphold law and order. The person will follow the law because it is the law. The video that I will play now is example of stage four. At stage four, we value authority and want to maintain social order. When the teacher sees the group fighting, he immediately steps in and shouts, Stop! Fighting at school is forbidden. He feels that, above all, it is important to follow the rules, otherwise chaos breaks out. He feels it is his duty to uphold the rules that sustain a functioning society. He asks himself, how can I maintain law and order? So the video means that the child becomes aware of the wider rules of society. So judgments concern obeying rules in order to uphold the law and, all, and avoid guilt. It's all about what the society says at this point. Okay, now, let's discuss the last level of moral development by Kilbridge theory. We have the post-conventional, meaning 
It is based on enduring and consistently principles. It is not just by recognizing the law, but behind the law. Now, the five stages under post-conventional. We have the social contract. Now, what is social contract? Social contract is what we called the law either wrong can be changed, one will act based on social justice and the common good. Now, we have for the six stages under post-conventional. We have the universal principles. This is associated with the development of one's conscience, having a set of standards that drives one to possess more responsibility to make societal changes, regardless of consequences to oneself. Now, I will be giving to you a, some, some known people as an example of universal principles. We have Mother Teresa and Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you for watching and more lessons to learn. Thank you. I just made it, I just made it.